Today we're going to talk about dog appeasing pheromones. What even is that? Well, naturally occurring dog appeasing pheromones are produced during a mother dog during the child rearing process to both promote calmness and bonding. Dogs are born with the innate ability to create, receive, and respond to these pheromones without any learning or experience required. Their physiological responses and their behavioral responses are hardwired from birth. Now, why does that matter to us? Well, we can exploit our knowledge of these pheromone systems to both support the treatment of behavioral issues, but also to prevent them from occurring in the first place. How do we know this? Research, lots and lots of research over decades. We understand now from research that puppies who are using pheromone treatment from the ages of eight weeks to 16 weeks old, not only show a reduction in stress-related behaviors like excessive vocalizations, but they show improved socialization scores a year after the pheromone treatment finished. What that means is that from that early support during their socialization period, they're better adjusted as adults to different kinds of stimuli and different kinds of environments than their peers who don't get that pheromone therapy. Now in adult dogs, we've also seen studies that show that dog appeasing pheromone therapy can reduce stress related to separation anxiety, the fear of fireworks, and also to stress and fear around being transported in vehicles. Not only is, are these studies showing that these treatments are effective, they also show that it's 100% safe, completely safe, not only as a solo therapy, but also in conjunction with any other number of therapies, including medication you might get from your vet. So the most commonly available dog appeasing pheromone therapy available to the public is Adaptil. And while it comes with a price tag, in the long run, it's often worth it. Now, there are three different kinds of products that you can look at, depending on what you're wanting or needing for your dog. The first kind of product are our collars. So you can get puppy collars, collars for small dogs, and collars for large dogs. And these last around four weeks. For our study involving those, you know, much higher socialization scores, they were using a collar form, meaning that the pup had 24-7 support. Now, the collars are fantastic for dogs who are finding the world stressful or are under a lot of stress a lot of the time because they provide your dog with 24-7 support. The next product that's most commonly used would be our diffusers. So diffusers plug into your wall and, as it suggests, diffuse the pheromone into the air. That means that diffusers are area specific. So if your dog's not in that area, they're not getting the pheromone therapy. You can often see them around in your vet's office. The last commonly used product is a spray form. Now sprays are really good when you're trying to help your dog overcome something that is quite specific. So your dog isn't under much stress in general, but perhaps they've got a specific fear of fireworks or of the car or, or around certain things happening either inside or outside the home. It can also be helpful when you're exposing your dogs to new environments and you want to support their calmness and their how receptive they are to those environments from the very start. Now like all products, it's really important that these are all used correctly in order to work. With our sprays, we can't be stingy. You can't just go and do one or two sprays and think that's gonna be okay. As the product suggests on the packaging, you need to use eight to 10 sprays every time you use it. You're also going to need to have it sitting to the side or where your dog isn't able to smell it once you have sprayed it for around 15 minutes while the alcohol dissipates. For our diffusers, we definitely don't wanna be putting them behind a couch or a chair or with anything overhanging them. They need to be on an open wall in order for the pheromone to diffuse around the area. And they also really need to be up the right way. While that might sound silly, it is something that happens. With our collars, it's really important that they are snug against the skin. The reason for this is because they work 
by using the friction and the warmth from your dog's fur and neck to release the active ingredient in the collar. A while ago, I was really, really skeptical that these products worked. And it was because I'd heard mixed results from people and I hadn't read the research. Now, the more I've learned, the more I've realized that a lot of people probably thought that when they were buying this product, that it was going to completely solve their dog's behavioral issues. Now, anyone who has a dog who is under a lot of stress in different situations knows that it would be very rare for one treatment to completely solve it, whether that's going to be something like a pheromone therapy or even a medication from your vet. It needs to be done in conjunction with things like training. Now, the reason I think that a lot of people have had mixed results, besides the fact that their expectations are too high, is that these products weren't used properly. And I know I have definitely seen very loose adaptable collars on dogs, which would pretty much do nothing for the dog. <laughs> or seeing things like diffusers upside down. I've also seen people who use the spray who do just kind of squirt it once or twice and then put their dog straight into the area. So you've got a dog who's being exposed to alcohol fumes without the actual benefit of the pheromone therapy. I hope you found some clarity during this video on what dog appeasing pheromones are and how they work. If you're more interested in reading some of the research or looking into it, we'll add some links at the end.